These events happened in the early days, long before I ever thought about the show Ghost Adventures. You see, I had always been into the paranormal. I remember listening to Art Bell, going to the library, reading books about aliens, ghosts, demons. When these events took place, a friend and I were headed to a paranormal location just to take a look. Imagine a scene. We're riding down this dark two-lane highway. When I see these headlights barreling down, flying up on us, music blasting. And when they pass us in the left lane, it's four teenagers, two boys, two girls, and man, are they having one hell of a time. Understand, this is a two-lane highway, speed limit, about 45 miles an hour. The four of them are doing at least 90 miles an hour. Top down, hair blowing in the wind. You know how teenagers are. They make bad decisions. The vehicle swerves back in front of us, taking off down the road. And I would say about 10 seconds later, it happens. You see the vehicle begin to swerve, rock back and forth, and next thing you know, it's flipping down the road. And I'm talking about a terrible accident. Have you ever watched one of those TV shows where you see someone going through something painful, and you know that it hurts so much that you experience sympathetic pain? Well, that's what I started to feel as I saw that vehicle flipping and tumbling down the roadway. I literally could feel their pain. Now, again, I want you to picture the scene. Dark two-lane highway. Now, their vehicle is flipped over in the middle of the road. We pull up to the right-hand side of the road, and as we're creeping, slowly moving forward, the road illuminated by the headlights, I see this young man laid out blood everywhere in the roadway. Miraculously, somehow, one of the girls had managed to climb out of the vehicle, and she was sitting down. On the right-hand side of the road, blood gushing from her head, lacerations all over her face, fingers broken, ankle and foot twisted in a direction that it wasn't supposed to be. Now, my friend and I hop out of the vehicle and we start to give CPR to the young man who was laying in the roadway, bleeding out. Another car arrives on the scene. A man hops out saying, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. How can I help? He stands there for a moment, surveying the scene and immediately darts over to the young lady with the twisted foot and broken fingers, lacerations all over her body, as we continue to try and keep this young man alive. And right here is when things start to get strange. Now I'm standing there, waving the traffic, trying to make sure that nobody else speeds into this accident. My friend is there on his knees, talking to him, saying, stay with me, kid. Stay with me. You're gonna make it. Stay with me, kid. Listen to me, at this point in time, we had a very good idea of every person that was out on that scene. But then, suddenly, out of the darkness, steps this figure, the shadow of a man. You know how you see something out of the corner of your eyes, your peripheral vision, and you know you see it, then you turn your head and it's still there? That's what I saw. This shadow of a man standing right next to me and right behind my friend who was down on his knees talking to this young man. The shadow looks down, surveying the scene, looks back in my direction, and then takes two steps back into the darkness. Now, to be clear with you, this shadow wasn't ominous in any way. It wasn't like Hat Man hopped up out of the bushes. It didn't have red eyes, yellow eyes, green eyes, nothing like that. It just stepped out of the darkness into the roadway and looked down at him. Moments later, the kid starts mumbling and talking, then gurgling, choking, and we see this pool of blood spilling out of the back of his neck and then he's gone i mean dead gone i'm standing there going through shock because i just witnessed this young man lose his life when i start to hear this groaning sound and what i mean by that is you know how if you've ever had an injury like a, a swollen ankle or you bruised your knee or you know a uh, cut on your elbow you know how when you're forced to move that body part you experience pain and naturally your body makes this groaning noise well that's what i begin to hear this oh ah, type groaning sound looking in that direction it's the other teenage boy he's literally climbing back up over the guardrail onto the road the poor kid has a hole in the side of his head the skin on his arm torn ripped mangled Standing there looking at the scene, all I could think to myself was, God, these are someone's children. Some parent has to come to terms with the fact that this just happened. 
the ambulance arrives and then we realize that two of the teenagers are going to survive but the other two are dead and gone now over the span of my time as a professional ghost hunter going to various haunted locations all around the world there's a couple of conclusions that i've been able to come to number one that when someone dies their family members come to visit them and to carry them over into the other dimension and also sometimes when people die they see everything i mean they're dead but they're watching themselves as they die and what i believe happened here was it was that young man's spirit taking one final look at its physical body before it moved on 